Okay, my chess friends, welcome to this chess video. And I hope you enjoyed the 42nd Chess Olympiad in Baku, Azerbaijan. I was following some of the games when I could and I really enjoy open tournaments like this because they're a lot more interesting than some of the Super Grandmaster closed tournaments that we are used to. Simply because there's a much broader range of players. And some of the rating differences lead to a disparity which results in some rather interesting chess. What I thought we could do is look at some tactics from the 42nd Olympiad in Baku and try to solve them ourselves. Put ourselves in the same position as the participants. Now this is a position from a game from Canadian Grandmaster Eric Hansen versus Andrzej Zagalko. And it's white to play. Now if you'd like to solve the tactic, please pause the video and we'll discuss it just in a little moment. Well, how to solve problems like this? You can see that there's very two powerfully placed knights. When you have knights like this, it's always good to look at the colour of squares they resign on. Because they will be attacking the same colour of square that they reside on on their next move. These are on dark squares, their next move they will be attacking dark squares. And therefore we look at the dark squares in our opponent's camp. See there's a queen, a rook and a rook already on dark squares. It would be awesome for us if we could get a knight to c6. So we'd fork the queen, the rook, and the rook. The problem for us is, is guarded by the king and the bishop. How can we make the tactic work? We can deflect the king to a dark square. And we can exchange the bishop. Well, we'll be able to put our knight in here to c6. And this is exactly what Grandmaster Hansen did. He played the wonderful queen sacrifice. Queen takes on e7, check. King is deflected to e7 square. We can take the bishop, which is the defender of c6 square. And here the game actually ended. Let's just play it out. E takes D5 and we have a beautiful royal fork. Knight to C6, checking everything in the house. After white takes the queen, we up an entire piece. And these pawns here are super weak. It's a very, very nice tactic from Grandmaster Eric Hansen. Let's take a look at another one. This is a game between Pintala Hare Krishna, Indian Super Grandmaster, and Sergei Karyakin, challenger for the World Championship. Again, if you'd like to pause the video and try to solve it, please do so. Again, we have two very powerfully placed knights. They're on light squares this time. And we look at the light squares in our opponent's camp. We can see the rook and the knight and the queen herself are already on light squares. We'd love to play knight takes here. Problem is, well, black will simply recapture and we'll have lost the piece for nothing. Is there a way to make this tactic work? What if we play knight to f6 check? Because the knight cannot be touched here on f6. G takes f6 and as we already said, knight takes h6 forking. The queen and the king will come. So yes, the tactic works. 
and Pantala Hare Krishna played the wonderful knight to f6 check, knowing that this knight cannot be touched. If g takes f6, as we said, well, ouch, look at that. So, Terje Karyakin was forced to play king to h8. Pantala Hare Krishna won the exchange and a pawn, and he has a very dominating position. This is weak, this is weak. Rook is super active, strong centre, and he went on to win this game. So very, very nice tactic. Knight to h6 check, winning the exchange and a pawn from Pintala Hare Krishna. Let's take a look at another one. This one is American Grandmaster Samuel Shankland. And he's playing Juan Fernandez Lopez. Black has just played knight from d7 to f6 because his bishop was or is going to be under attack. problem with this is, is it puts the knight in a self pin like that. But can you find a way to exploit this tactic? Well again we have a knight on a dark square. We look at all the dark squares in our opponent's camp. The queen is on a dark square. The knight is on a dark square. We'd love to put a knight in here to d5. The problem for us is, is it's guarded by this bishop here on c6. And here Samuel Shanklin played the wonderful b5. Now, no matter where this bishop goes, we'll be able to put a knight here to d5. Here the game actually ended, but let's just play it out anyhow. See, bishop to d7. We can use the idea of attraction, attracting the king to the f6 square, a dark square. Knight to d5. Checking king and queen, and we have one apiece. Very, very nice idea there from Samuel Shanklin to play b5. Let's take a look at just... Let's take a look at some more. This one is a little more complicated. It's from Yi Wei from China and Bedri Sedako. You can see that the king here, or sorry, let me just say, if you'd like to pause the video, please do so now. And we'll come back and try and explain what's happening in a little moment. So you have two white pieces that are under attack. The bishop and the queen. But black has his own problems. The king has hardly any mobility. This bishop is cutting it off from here. There are weak squares around it and a dark square bishop that is ready to come to h6. Let's see what happens if h6, bishop h6, the knight is forced to take. Queen h6 and the king has a single square, g8. Let's play it out on the board. Bishop h6 check, knight takes h6, queen takes h6 check, and the king has a single square. And here it was the move that is probably quite difficult to see. Attacking this weak point here on f7 with bishop to e8. Wonderful move. There's only one real way to defend. Bishop takes, Queen's got to give herself up, Knight takes, King takes, and the deflecting, Rook takes on e7 with check. 
king to e7, and white will regain the material and have a fairly dominant position. Maybe the rook will come. King in the centre here, black will either get mated or have to give up lots of material. So very, very nice tactic there from Ye Wei. Let's take a look at another one. This is a game here from Shakira Mamiyadarov and Pintala Hare Krishna. And this is probably my favourite tactic of the Olympiad. In the actual game, Hare Krishna played rook a, sorry, rook to d1. There is a far more subtle win here. And if you'd like to pause the video and try to work it out, please do so now. How could we solve this tactic? We can see that we'd love to advance the pawn and create a queen. But the rook here can come to the c-file. How to prevent this? Well, we can prevent it with what looks to me like a positional sacrifice. Beautiful rook to c4. After b takes c4, c-file is blocked. And there's nothing can prevent this pawn from queening next move. Next two moves, sorry. Very, very beautiful and subtle uh, rook sacrifice there. Harry Christian never played that, in fact, and he played rook to d1. Sorry, rook to d1. And, uh, well, white resigned on the spot. Because again, one of these pawns will queen. Let's take a look at some ladies games now. Okay, this is a game from Giovanna Eric versus uh, Gabriella Johnson. And if you'd like to pause the video and try and simulate what's going on, please do so now. What is happening in this position here? We well, can see that e7 is very weak. It's attacked by knight and bishop, defended by queen and rook. What happens if a knight takes on e7? Well, it comes with check. And no matter where the king goes, if it goes here or here, the knight will come and there will be a discovery waiting for the queen. So this means that the rook has got to take. Let's play it out. Knight takes e7, check. Rook takes e7, deflecting the rook away from the defence of the queen. And we can see that there's the theme of rook, queen, opposition here on the d-file. Can we take advantage of this? Yes, we can. Queen takes on c5, making use of this idea. In the game f6 was played, attacking a bishop, but we have an even greater threat. Rook takes on d6, hitting the queen. Queen went to f8, and white simply moved her bishop back to f4. White is up the exchange. And these are super weak and has a very dominating position. It's a very nice tactic there from Giovanna Eric. Exploiting the fact that the king, or this rook has to take the knight. And idea of queen rook opposition and utilizing the pin against uh, the queen. Let's take a look at another one. This is a very, very rich position and it's an 
Antonetta Stefanova vs Eva Repkova. If you'd like to pause the video and try and work out what is happening, please do so now. What can we say about this position? We have no checks that make any sense. And when we examine the pieces, we can see that this queen here is looking rather suspicious because she has hardly anywhere to go. Can I go here? Can I go here? Can I go here, here or here? In fact, she has only a single square. What happens if we attack her with the bishop? Well, she's got to go here. There'll be a queen and a knight here, and we can at least win a piece by forking knight and queen. And this is what Antonetta actually played. Bishop to e1, hitting the queen. Queen has got to go to h6. g5. And here, Eva gave up the knight. She's hoping that the queen and the rook should be able to get back some material. But it doesn't work. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes. And this comes with attack. Pawn takes on f6. King is forced to f8. And white has a very, very nice position. King has hardly any mobility. And she's up material. So very, very nice tactic. Making use of the lack of mobility of the black queen. And let's take a look at this one here. This is the final one. This is former ladies world champion Alexander Kostinuk. Alexandra Kostinuk versus Nana Daginzi, I think. This is quite a difficult tactic to see. Um, if you'd like to pause the video, please do so now and we'll try and explain what's happening in a little moment. There are so many elements in this. Um, I, was, I was simply blown away by Alexandra's, um, her tactical ability. It's just phenomenal. Okay, there is, the rook is pinned. But there's no real way to take advantage of it at present. If a bishop came here, however, well, with simply threatening to mate black, but it's not possible because of all the defenders of the back rank. Moreover, this bishop, I mean, if we could get in a rook to here, we could exchange them off. But the bishop is a very powerful defender of the e8 square. And here, Alexandra plays the wonderful Rook takes on f5, deflecting this bishop away from the defence of the e8 square. Bishop takes. Rook to e8, check. Queen's got to take. Takes, takes. And here's our idea. Look at that. Bishop to f8. Threatening mate. Well, Nana throws in essentially a spike check. King f2. King e7, well, take, rook takes, and Alexander has a very powerful and mobile queen. This knight has to be careful where it goes because there's a lot of issues along the back rank where it could lose itself. And Alexander won this game. It's a very, very nice tactic. Look at that. Rook takes on f5. With this idea here. Very nice indeed. So that was some tactics from the chess Olympiad. My chess friends, 
I hope you enjoyed uh, trying to solve them as much as I did relating them to you. I apologise for not having uploaded a video for some time. Uh, there are a number of reasons for this. Um, but, um, well, I'm glad to have done so uh, now. So, I wish you well with your own chess. I sincerely wish you well, sorry. And I thank you very much for taking the time to watch this chess video. Take care and goodbye. Only love can make it rain With the beach is kissed by the sea Only love